Back in October 2022, I posted a video that outlined an Arc Strider build that I used to annihilate Grandmaster Nightfalls, including a 9 minute and 57 second solo GM Fallen Saber and a 1237 Scarlet Key. In Season 20, Bungie nerfed 1 2 Punch quite heavily, which made this build much less potent. That being said, the new dungeon this season, Ghosts of the Deep, as well as a decent amount of the GMs such as Fallen Saber, The Disgraced, Lightblade, and Psyops Moon are designed in ways that still allow for this Arc Strider build to thrive. So I've decided to take the time to update the build as I hadn't done that in over 7 months, and Lightfall brought a lot of new ways to design this build thanks to no longer requiring certain affinities on armor. The most important piece to this build is the Assassin's Cowl Helmet, which is originally obtained from the Shadowkeep campaign, and then you want to pair that with a 1-2 punch shotgun. In my opinion, the best frame for a 1-2 punch shotgun is a rapid fire frame because they boost your ammo reserves. And then, I also really like the perk Grave Robber because it means I never need to reload the shotgun. Good news, the Icolo shotgun is craftable and gets both of these perks. Bad news, you can't actually get that weapon to drop right now, so if you don't have the pattern, you need to wait until Xur or Banshee sells it, and you can use a Deep Sight Harmonizer on it. Or maybe you can pull them as Red Borders, I don't know if you can, uh, but save your Deep Sight Harmonizers. The Regnahold D is also a craftable rapid fire, but it doesn't get Grave Robber, but it does get Auto Loading Holster, which is a good alternative. If you don't have either of those patterns, the Deadweight Shotgun from Gambit can also get Grave Robber and 1-2 Punch, so if you love Gambit like myself, you may wish to focus some Gambit engrams there. There are obviously other frames that will work, I know a lot of people like lightweight frames, my personal preference though is Rapid Fire, and at the end of the day, all you need is a shotgun with 1-2 Punch for this to work. In terms of how to set up your subclass, this is what I recommend. For your dodge, you want Gambler's Dodge so that each time you dodge near an enemy, you regain your melee. Your melee should be Combination Blow so that each time you score a melee kill, you refresh your class ability, you increase your melee damage, and you gain a little bit of health back. Your aspects should be Flow State and Lethal Current because this way you can keep jolting enemies and maintain amplification through the gameplay loop. The grenade is your choice. I prefer pulse nades, but flashbangs aren't a bad choice either, as flashbangs blind enemies and are also intrinsic unstop, so if you're doing any activity with unstoppables, flashbangs are a great choice. For the fragments, I built mine using shock, resistance, feedback, and ions. However, I have seen some people swap one or two of these out for magnitude, amplitude, or volts. I think the four I mentioned are the best, but you can use what you prefer. Shock provides Jolt on Grenades, which intrinsically stuns overloads and deals damage to all enemies within 8 meters. Very good choice. Resistance provides 25% damage reduction while surrounded by 3 enemies within a 15 meter radius. Feedback provides a 75% increase to your next melee upon being struck by a melee, and then Ions creates an Ionic Trace upon killing a Jolted target, but this has a 10 second cooldown. Ionic Traces provide 12.5% melee and grenade energy, and 15% class ability energy. I would say if you do swap out a fragment, I would suggest you swap out Ions for one of the other ones, but I think Ions to get those grenades back quicker is a very good choice. In terms of stat distribution, the first stat you should always focus when making any build for PvE is Resilience for the 30% damage resistance. The second stat that I would recommend you focus is Discipline to get grenades back quicker, as arc grenades are very strong and they really help this build shine. After Discipline, I would either focus Mobility or Recovery. I prefer Recovery, but I know some people like Mobility. Mobility is good if you ever miss a dodge and you want to get it back quickly, but the way that Amplification works, you gain 200% class ability regeneration while Amplified anyway, so you will eventually get your dodge back, but if you want it back a little bit quicker, you can focus it into Mobility. Recovery is good as well because if you're ever in a situation where you need to heal health quickly and get back into an engagement, recovery helps there. 
Both obviously have their uses and you can choose to focus in whichever one of those two you want. Or you could even do strength as well if you wanted. Just don't do intellect. Intellect is the worst stat to focus into because there are so many better ways to get your super back and we'll be going over those later. If you don't know about it, D2 Armor Picker is a great website for letting you curate these stats to your liking and it will tell you what armor pieces you need and you can copy these to a dim loadout. For mods on your helmet you want Hands On and Dynamo. Sometimes these mods are discounted in the artifact but in seasons where they aren't discounted you can always fit one Hands On, one Dynamo, and one major stat mod on your helmet. Hands On and Dynamo provide you super on melee kills and while dodging near enemies, two things that we're doing quite a bit while using this build. On your arms, you want heavy handed and impact induction, and if you have the room, you can place a second impact induction or a dexterity mod. Heavy handed will create an orb of power on powered melee kills, while impact induction gives 20% grenade energy on melee hits for one mod and 25% for two. However, there is a seven second cooldown between activations. A single dexterity mod provides a 0.8x ready stow animation duration multiplier, and enhanced grave robber helps give handling as well if you're using a crafted 1-2 punch shotgun. On your chest piece, you can run whatever resists you want. I tend to run one harmonic, one melee, and one concussive, or two harmonic and a concussive, or some combination of these. You can curate this depending on the activity you're doing. If you're doing an activity with a lot of void, obviously focus voids instead of harmonics. Melee is a very good resist mod for this build because you're frequently within that 4 meter distance between an enemy, and so you'll always be getting that damage reduction. On your legs, you have a lot of freedom. I tend to run Recuperation, Innervation, and a third mod of my choice, usually it's a Scavenger, however you can run whatever you want here. I tend to spam my grenades a lot, so I use Innervation for the 10% grenade energy on an orb pickup, and Recuperation for the 70 HP on an orb pickup. And obviously I'm making a lot of orbs thanks to Heavy Handed. On your class item, you also have a lot of freedom, mods like Bomber are great, to get your grenades back, distribution isn't that bad either, and you could also run the proximity ward finisher if you're doing a lot of finishers, 1-2 finisher if you ever want to get your melee back instantly, or even special finisher if you're running low on shotgun ammo. So the way this build works is that killing an enemy with a charged melee will grant you combination blow which fully refills your class ability, provides some health back, and also grants you 60% additional melee damage per stack up to 3x. This means at 3x you're doing 409.6% more melee damage. Gambler's Dodge is used to recharge your melee and due to lethal current, that next melee will also jolt the target and create a damaging aftershock. Since that target is jolted, when that target dies you will become amplified, and being amplified with flow state grants you plus 50 reload speed, a 0.8x reload multiplier, some damage resist while dodging, and 200% additional class ability regeneration in case you ever miss a dodge. This dodge melee combination is the core of the build. However, there are a lot more buffs that we can add to our build to make us even stronger to the point where we kill champions in the hardest activities with only two melees. The first addition is the 1-2 punch shotgun. Against champions, 1-2 punch will double your melee damage, so with 3x combination blow and 1-2 punch, you're now dealing 819% more melee damage. Against bosses, however, 1-2 punch does even more. Instead of doubling, it's a 2.5x. That means against bosses, you're doing 1024% more damage. The second addition that we can implement is the Tractor Cannon. Tractor Cannon provides a 30% debuff on a target for 10 seconds, which means upon applying Tractor Cannon, champions will be taking 1,065% more melee damage and bosses 1,331%. The third addition that we can add is Spark of Feedback, which provides that 75% additional melee damage upon taking melee damage yourself. 
While this one is a lot more risky to proc, especially in that higher end game content, it still provides an insane damage boost. If we add this in, champions will be taking 1864% more melee damage and bosses 2329. The fourth addition is dependent on the activity, but certain activities could have the Arc Surge modifier applied. This increases all outgoing Arc damage by an additional 25%. If we combine all of these effects together, that's 2,330 increased melee damage against champions, and 2,912% increased melee damage against bosses. Not bad at all. For people who wish to use this build in activities with champions, we need to have strategies to stun each champion type. The good thing is that when Lightfall launched, Bungie added a lot more ways to stun champions that weren't reliant on weapons. Unstoppables can now be stunned by Arc Blind effects, which on Arc Strider can be achieved through flashbang grenades or by mailing a jolted target. Obviously, flashbang nades are the safer option, but non-grandmaster activities doing just the two melee strategy will work fine. Overloads can be stunned by arc jolt effects, which on arc strider can easily be achieved by throwing any grenade, as long as you have the spark of shock fragment on, or through a single melee due to the lethal current aspect. Overloads can also be stunned by void suppression, which tractor cannon applies. Overload also intrinsically lowers the specific enemy's damage output by 25%, so applying Tractor Cannon to an enemy will overload it, making it deal 25% less damage as well. This means that Barriers are the only champion type that cannot be stunned by an Arc subclass. That being said, they can be killed by the 1-2 punch combination. The issue here arrives when you come to a Barrier and you don't have Combination Blow ready. In this case, we have to get creative. There are two choices available in this situation. One is to use an already existing method of stunning anti-barrier champions by using an artifact mod. This season we have anti-barrier auto rifle. The second option is to use the arc staff super. So if you don't know, the arc staff super will stun lock anti-barrier champions even in the hardest of activities. It also, most recently, got a 20% buff at the start of Season of the Deep. Using Arc Staff obviously means you're not using Gathering Storm, but it's very good for barrier champions. All of these strategies don't involve the use of artifact mods, but we can actually add in artifact mods to make this build even more potent. In Season 21, the artifact is very arc friendly, and the three best mods to consider are Amped Up, Electric Armor, and Thunderous Retort. Thunder's Retort is not that important if you're using Gathering Storm, but if you're using Arc Staff, it provides a 30% increase to Arc Staff damage if cast while Amplified or Weak. Electric Armor is great for that 30% DR while Amped, and Amped Up increases the maxed Amp time to 20 seconds. The Melee Cost Reduction lets you use two Hands-On and two Impact Induction 2, which is nice for getting your Super and Grenades back even quicker. The hardest part of this build is stacking up the 3x combination blow, but you can use your shotgun from a longer range or a primary to help with that. Once you get the build going, it's insanely deadly, and the strategy is to just dodge melee, dodge melee, dodge melee, and when you come to a really tough enemy, you would fire your tractor cannon, swap to your 1-2 punch shotgun, shoot, two melees, repeat. I can't wait to see what insane stuff people pull off this season. I, for one, am excited to see if I can beat my 9 minute and 57 second Platinum Solo Fallen Saber time. It will be tough, but I think it's definitely doable, and I'm excited to see how low that time can go.